Okay, so now we've taken a look at the outside of the box. It's time to uh, open it up. Uh, this is just a cover that slides over the box. Um, you pull this flap here, it should give you a bit of something to uh, pull on. And then... There we go. Uh, so it comes in a pretty plain box inside. Cheap and cheerful. Okay, so first of all we've got a uh, USB cable, uh, it's just a micro USB on one end and then the sort of standard uh, USB-A connector on the other end. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's no power supply so you will have to provide your own USB power source to plug this into. Okay, this is the uh, user guide. Uh, there's a couple of QR codes there to follow their various social media accounts. Uh, there's one here to install the application. Uh, some brief instructions on how to get it all plugged in and connected. And then some instructions on using the app. Uh, it's all pretty simple. What I would suggest is um, don't plug it in straight away. Get the app installed, get ready to configure it, and then plug it in. Okay, so I'm now going to cover installing the Broadlink eControl app. I use Android, uh, so I've gone to the Play Store and searched for eControl. Uh, if you use an Apple device, uh, you'd go to the App Store and then search for eControl. Uh, if in doubt, you can always scan the QR code that's provided in the user guide and that should take you to the relevant application. So I'm going to hit install and then accept the permissions. It's just going to download. And then it's just installing. Okay, so that's the app installed. So I'm going to click on open. It's going to display a splash screen. Followed by this sign in page. Uh, I have signed in previously. Uh, it allows you to back up some of the settings to the cloud, which may be uh, useful. I'm going to skip it for now. And then we get a warning about the Alexa support. So the bigger brother of the Black Bean uh, will support Alexa. It's a bit of a kludge because you have to install an application on your phone that's always running in the background. Alexa will speak to that app and then the app speaks to the Black Bean. So it's a bit of a kludge. I don't like having to always have an application running. Um, especially on an Android device. If it's on a server then that's fine, but not on something like a phone. So I'm going to cancel this, and then it's going to take us to the home page. These two scenes at the top, living room and scene of getting up, they're just examples. They're empty, um, so we can ignore those for now. I'm going to hit the plus on the top right corner, and then add device. And then it's going to show this page. So on this page, uh, you need to enter your Wi-Fi password uh, and select the relevant Wi-Fi network. A uh, word of warning. Now my phone defaults to my 5 gigahertz network, but obviously the Black Bean has only got support for 2.4 gigahertz. So if you have different SSIDs for different frequencies, you just need to make sure that you're using the correct one. So I've corrected my SSID so it connects to the 2.4 gigahertz network, and now I'm going to enter my Wi-Fi password. Okay, so now I've entered my Wi-Fi password. I'm going to plug in the Black Bean for the first time. If you have already plugged it in you can just hit the reset button um, but you should see the blue light flashing on the front rapidly to show it's in configuration mode and then I'm going to hit configure in the app. So that's now going to do its thing. It'll take a minute or two whilst it configures. Uh, it does seem to take a fair old while. So we'll just wait for that.
Okay, so we're almost there. I can see the blue light on the black bean is now flashing slowly. Uh, that means it's in configuration mode. And now we've returned to the home screen. So if I go to device list, this is my black bean here. If I click edit name, I'm just going to save it something useful. If you've got more than one, uh, it helps to differentiate between them. Helps if I spell it correctly. So I'm going to save that, done, and then hit save. There we go. So now, once I add the second one on the network, I can differentiate between them. That's it for the configuration. So the next step is to add a remote, and then we can configure the black bean to communicate with our device over infrared using the app. Okay, so now we have configured the black bean and connected it to the Wi-Fi. It's time to add a device. So we press the plus in the top right corner. Add remote. It's going to give a list of the uh, available options. We're going to go with TV first of all. Now I quite like this app because it provides a uh, sort of familiar TV remote layout. I'm going to make it black because everything looks better in black, right? Uh, the way this works is you, you press a button in the app. The black bean will then go into learning mode. You then point the remote at the black bean, press the button, and it's going to save it. So if I press the plus volume button, it's going to tell me to operate the remote. So I'm going to point the remote at the black bean and press volume up. Then the white light's going to go out. Okay, so that was saved successfully. We're going to do the same thing for volume down. The white light goes out, so that's been learnt. And that's it for the uh, learning the buttons. Um, obviously, you would go through and configure the rest of them. Uh, there's also more option. You can go use defined, learn single. So we use a sleep button quite a lot. Uh, we set a 20 minute timer when we go to bed and then it turns off as we drift off to sleep. So I'm going to press the sleep button on the remote. You'll see the white light go out. And that's been saved successfully. I'm going to hit that button again. Edit. I'm going to call it sleep. Hit done, save, and there we've got our sleep burn. So I'm going to hit back, it's going to take us to this page. And now if we click on the TV, it's going to show our remote. Now the buttons that we've actually learned are uh, highlighted and the others remain greyed out. Uh, so if I hit the plus button on the app, you'll see the white button, the white light blink on the uh, black bean, which indicated it's transmitted the infrared. I'll do the same for uh, volume down. And there's the white light again. Uh, so that's all set up and working now. Uh, so the next step is to go and test it on the TV. Okay, so I've relocated to the room with the TV that we just configured. I've taken the black bean with me and plugged it in. I'm giving it a few minutes just to connect to the Wi-Fi and get warmed up. So now if I'm in the Broadlink app, I go to TV. It's going to open up the remote. If I hit plus on the volume, we can see on the TV screen it goes up almost instantaneously. If I hit down, it goes down. Take it all the way down. So it works, and it works very well. Uh, I will cover the, the Python and MQTT uh, options uh, further down the road. 
um, and sort of integrating it with bits and pieces there. But that's it. So thanks for watching.